Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Alan Hathaway. I'm glad you joined me for this particular sermon today. This is my last sermon in uh, the series on relationships. I'll be starting a new series next Sunday. I've kind of enjoyed this particular series. Uh, relationships are kind of at the cornerstone of our Christian walk, and we don't often think about how important those relationships are. One of the most difficult aspects of our relationships are our tongues. We often say things that we should not say to people. We often uh, speak words we shouldn't say to our husbands or our wives. We often say things to people in our church community that we should not say to them. And sometimes we flatter people that we shouldn't flatter. In fact, sometimes we lack honesty or integrity in those matters. And so those are some things I want to talk to you about today. If you'd like to join us for service, our service begins at Riverdale at 830 and uh, uh, at the uh, Riverdale Community Church. And our service here in Garrison begins at the Garrison Church of God at 1030. So we'd love to have you come and be a part of any of these services or both of them if you want to be. Uh, in this area of relationships and our language and our tongue, uh, we are inclined to several errors uh, in, in this circumstance. One of them is we make the mistake of being brutally honest. And I want to emphasize the word brutal in there because we disguise that brutality with the concept that we're just being candid. Um, and it's just a candid observation. Sometimes we uh, retaliate with name-calling or insults, and we disguise it by saying, well, it's honest criticism. Or sometimes we flatter, but our flattery is with the intention of getting uh, advantage or the intention of doing harm to the individual. We often gossip or malign a person, and we call it concern. We often also manipulate others to our own advantage, and we disguise that because we say we're trying to make them more productive. As a result, our relationships with people suffer, especially those people that are closest to us. And that's what I am troubled by. One of the things that we need most in our lives, especially in this day and age, is self-control. We are struggling with that a lot. And I know I struggle with that a lot. Uh, it is one of the skills that we need to master if we are to be solid Christians in this generation. No more is this demonstrated than when we talk with our family members and how we treat them. In Luke chapter 6, verse 45, Jesus tells us that out of the abundance of the heart, our mouth speaks. And so as a result of that, we what's going on inside of us, if we fail to discipline ourselves on the interior, eventually that's going to get out into our words and how we talk to people and how we treat them with our words. James in chapter 3 tells us that our tongues are the, are the most frequent violators of this integrity in our lives. And in fact, he goes on to say that our tongues are like uh, snakes that are full of poison or like uh, sparks or flying embers that set entire forests on fire. Our tongues are destructive very often. As a pastor, I have watched time and time again as relationships have been strained or broken because a person lacked self-control in their speech. 
So it is important that we learn that. I've entitled this particular message, A Standing Heart, and it's taken from Psalm chapter 32, verse 11, where it says, Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. It literally means to stand up in the heart, to have a heart that is uh, a heart of integrity, a heart of purpose. Jesus said out of that heart is where our speech comes. It's, it's where the things that, that identify us come from. I'll be talking a lot about horses today, and to be honest with you, I don't know a lot about horses, just what I've read. Uh, I've been on a horse a time or two, and uh, I've discovered that very often the horse knew a whole lot more than I did, and that was probably a good thing, because otherwise the horse would have thrown me to the ground. <laughs> but I have come to appreciate in the study that I've done uh, the wonder of these particular animals. In Job, it tells us in chapter 39 that they are among the most powerful and glorious animals of God's creation. They are proud and courageous animals. Uh, horses and donkeys, uh, uh, both of the equi uh, equine species, uh, talk to us about the concept of control in our lives. Horses are controlled, and donkeys to some extent, are controlled by a bit. Uh, and that bit is placed in their mouth, uh, in what's called the bars of their mouth, uh, over their tongue. And it presses into these soft portions of their mouth, uh, the roof of their mouth, the uh, gums, the edges of their lips, and most importantly, their tongues, and it is by the means of those things that their actions are controlled. Kind of an interesting uh, insight into our own lives and what really controls or motivates us. If we put a bridle on our tongues or we put a bit on our tongues, uh, we'll discover that a whole lot of good stuff happens. Uh, we, as the old saying goes, should think before we speak. There are a lot of things that we do in life that are unhealthy, uh, that are destructive to us and to others. James lays out some principles in his uh, first, in his third chapter of James, in the first verses of that. He says, not many of you should presume to be teachers. And one of the principles that he talks about is the fact that if we pretend that we're experts, we're going to have to live up to it. And that's not always easy to do. He also talks to us about the idea that we need to be humble uh, because, well, we all make mistakes. And so there is a need for humbleness in our attitude. And we also under, understand that when we control our tongues, it changes a lot of things in our lives. It changes our direction and our purpose in lives, in life. And that's something that I have needed to learn again and again and again. As a pastor, as James tells me, I'm going to have to live up to being an expert. And that's not always easy to do. Um, and that's why humility and humbleness are important in every walk of our lives. I'll be sharing with you some more principles about Christian behavior and Christian activity uh, in, our, in our lives. In fact, I've got seven principles that I'll be sharing during my message this morning. I hope that you'll come and, and be a part of that. One of the powerful things that we are told to do is that self-control... Jesus invites us to come and learn of him, to be a disciple of his. And as we follow after him, and as that good quality of, that he brings into our lives gets down into our souls, and as we discipline ourselves to follow after him, we will discover that 
we will have good treasure inside of us. And that out of that good treasure, we can speak good into the lives of other people. That doesn't always mean that it will be pleasant words. Sometimes um, other people need to learn some discipline too, and there are going to be some times when we have to speak that as well. But we will learn that our motivations that come from inside of us will be motivations for good and for the good of other people. And that's part of what our Christian commitment is all about. Being upright in heart, be having a standing heart, is an important thing in life. God can do some wonderful things with people that are willing to be discipled and to self-discipline. I hope you have learned those things or are learning them in your life. God bless you. You have a wonderful day today.